I have some uh, dear friends, in fact, priest friends, who uh, often make fun of me good-naturedly. At least I think it's good-naturedly. I hope so. Uh, about the fact that I, I read a lot of history and science. I read other things as well. I do. I read spirituality, theology. I read the documents of our church. Uh, lots of preparation for homilies and talks. I do that. But for fun, for recreation, I, I do like to read history and science. You can learn so much, and particularly with science, as we're reminded by my colleague and fellow bishop, ordained with me on the same day, Bishop Robert Barron, there ought not to be this great chasm between faith and science, between science and religion. You can learn a lot from science and a lot from history about our humanity. Uh, God made this world. He is the creator. And when we study it, when we learn about it, the, the awe, the wonder, the mystery of it, it's absolutely wonderful. It helps us to grow in our faith. It certainly helps me. Uh, for fun, lately, I'm reading a little book entitled Finding North, How Navigation Makes Us Human. It's by a man named George Mickelson Foy. I'm just in the beginning of the book, but it's wonderful so far. He speaks about the loss of our sense of direction, uh, literally losing our sense of direction with all of the technology that's at our disposal, with the GPS systems that we have, that we simply punch in numbers and destinations and we get there automatically, usually. Not all the time. You've had a few glitches with that as, as well as I have. But we're losing our ability, that human ability, that natural ability to find our way and there's a, a parallel and a parable there for all of us uh, in our own day and age where I think we have lost in a, our sense of direction, that we, we tend not to, to have that solid moral compass within us. What I also liked about the beginning of this book is he talks about the sense of direction that's literally implanted in us and is manifested in a human being from the very earliest stages, on a cellular level, on a molecular level, on a DNA level, where these cells are coming together. A single cell begins its life, its human life, and it begins to multiply. And then cells migrate in these uh, groups of cells called, I'm going to get really scientific now, morphogens. Look it up. You'll be fascinated. How as the baby is beginning to grow, the cells migrate to just the right place to form what's going to be the spinal cord, for example, what will be the, the, the baby's brain, the baby's eyes and ears, the baby's feet and hands. Absolutely marvelous. And it begins on that cellular level, a single cell, and then it begins. How beautiful. I'm thinking of uh, our own day and age in this month of October. We're almost at the very end of this, uh, this month of Respect Life. And uh, I was thinking the other day, with all of these explorations going on and, and efforts to, to learn more about this beautiful solar system and universe that we live in, uh, with the efforts, the renewed efforts, for example, to go to Mars, and I'm wondering if someday in the future uh, some probe or maybe even a human on the, on the face of that planet were to find a single cell, a one-celled organism of life, what would the headlines be back here on Earth? It would be life found on Mars. Life exists on Mars. And it would be Martian life. And our senators and representatives would be rushing and falling over each other to pass new legislation to protect Martian life. Well, we need to respect the science, don't we? <laughs> Human life, it begins in the womb. I want to read something from... Uh, psalm 139 and it's about the middle of that psalm where the, the psalmist says and would have sung truly you have formed my inmost being you knit me in my mother's womb I give you thanks that I'm fearfully wonderfully made wonderful are your works my soul also you knew full well nor was my frame unknown to you when I was made in secret when I was fashioned in the depths of the earth. Very reminiscent of the first chapter, first few verses actually, of the prophet Jeremiah, where he says, before you formed me in the womb, you knew me. 
we were knit together by the Lord on that beautiful, beautiful level. So many prayer warriors and wonderful people during this month of October, uh, winding up our 40 days for life as well. I'm so proud of, of the right to life of Central California and also our local efforts here in the Diocese of Fresno, where during the 40 days for life, uh, Central Life of uh, 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 Right to Life of Central California partnered uh, with our, our pregnancy care center here in Fresno to rent uh, some space right next to Planned Parenthood down in downtown Fresno on Fulton Avenue. Prayer warriors, courageous people speaking up for life, life from, from conception to natural death. I'd like to end with a very short quote from Pope, Pope Francis, in fact from Amoris Laetitia about this. So great is the value of human life and so inalienable the right to life of an innocent child growing in the mother's womb that no alleged right, I'm going to repeat that, no alleged right can justify a decision to terminate that life. So God bless you, prayer warriors. God bless you and all of those whom you love, always and in every way. Yeah.